Future Pathways. أولا نشكركم على تسجيلكم حضوركم معنا محاضرة اليوم بعنوان USMLE إن شاء الله بيقدمها دكتور عبد العزيز الملحم إذا عندكم أي سؤال خلال المحاضرة يا ليت ترسلونها على ذا Q&A box راح نجمعها ونسألها للدكتور في فقرة سؤال والجواب نهاية المحاضرة المحاضرة تعرض لايف على يوتيوب الآن في حال أنكم واجهتوا أي مشاكل على زوم تقدرون تتابعونا هناك الرابط موجود على صفحتنا في تويتر الآن دكتور ممكن تتفضل السلام عليكم يعطيكم آه، العافيه جميعا ومشاكل لكم حضوركم واشكر الشباب في المجلس الطلاب في جامعه الملك سعود على الترتيب وستيتنج بيس اب تو انترستيوز ماي سيلف انا بلايز الملحم ميديكال انترن من جامعه الامام عبد الرحمن بن فيصل في الدمام ان شاء الله today I'll be talking about USMLE step exams uh, I'll just go over three exams that you need to start residency in the US اللي هم USMLE step 1 USMLE step 2 CK و USMLE step 2 CS ان شاء الله ما بيكون طبعا ديتيلز لكل شيء وكيف تجهز ال every resource ولكن ان شاء الله بيعطيكم good ground work for anyone who wants to take any of these exams to start. ف first of all we'll start with USMLE step 1. So for outlines regarding USMLE step 1 we'll talk about what is the step 1 exam and then a little bit about how to prepare for the exam. First of all how does it differ from university exams اختبار في الجامعه وما هي المصادر اللي عادة نستخدمها نتكلم شوية عن practice tests with their value and preparation وآخر شيء شوية pitfall ونتكلم عن step one going pass and fail in the future So first of all USMLE step one is the first step in getting licensed as a physician in the US It's one of four required tests to practice medicine in the US Step one, step two CK, step two CS و step three عشان تبدأ residency في الUS ما تحتاج إلا أول ثلاثة Step three, you can do it later on during residency. It's a multiple choice exam. It's eight hours in length. It has seven blocks that are one hour long, and then you have an hour break. A difference tested here are basic sciences in Akhadhahna. It's pathology, physiology, pharmacology, biochemistry, and nutrition, microbiology and immunology, gross anatomy and embryology, histology and cell biology, or behavioral science and genetics. Let you find breakdown. I'm not sure if it's clear here. The breakdown of uh, Subjects, the biggest emphasis on the big three, the three P's, pathology, physiology, and pharmacology. Which one pathology is about 50% of the exam. And very rarely you'll get a question that's purely one subject, usually integrated together, but the biggest emphasis obviously is on pathology. So, Hadil Fact, Tal Ikhtibar, anything after that is just my opinion based on my experience with some of my colleagues who took the exam and myself. So, first of all, how does it differ from university exams? My experience in Farkan al USMLE exams, you probably have a minute, sort of minute and change for each question with longer stems. So I can do with the lab interpreting a lot of data. Or the questions to come out in second order instead of first order. I'll show you an example right now. First of all, how that is a somewhat long stem for an exam, USMLE step one. So as you see, you have a lot of data to interpret in terms of to coming to an answer. You kind of have to look at the history of a patient, you give you some vitals, then you kind of look at labs, and then you'll find some histologic findings. And then you have one minute, and you need to be quick, and you have to like, be systematic about reading your questions. You, you don't have much time to waste. In the second order of questions, I started to ask you a question. For example, what are the crystals in the pseudo gout? I think it's a question. It'll give you a history and some questions, yeah, I mean, like history of someone with arthritis, and they'll give you some findings on joint aspiration that are suggestive of the gout. So to answer a question, you'll have to figure out what's the term, what the stem is talking about, and then you kind of want to know something about that disease. But then I said to al wahid who is al-Kalan, and she and the one question. So then you can have some third order questions, but for step one, usually it's second order. Study resources. We studied the main. The first one is basic science review material. This is before you start to prepare the dedicated. You see, it's a study of basic science that I took. And this length and the extent of the study is based on what you don't remember. If you are fresh off clinical or preclinical sciences, it shouldn't take too long. If you are intern or after that, it probably takes a little bit more time. فهذه فيها أكبر variation بين الناس في مصادر كثير وبتضيع لو ذاكرهم كلهم 
فسام اكزامبلز ار ريفيو كورسز في كورسز لايف الناس اللي ياخذونها مثلا كابلان وبيكر في ريفيو فيديوز زي فيديوز كابلان فيديوز بيكر بوردز اند بيوند بثوما فيديوز سكتشي فيديوز يطول فيها الكلام وفي ريفيو بوكس اللي كتب كابلان كتب بيكر بثوما وما الى ذلك Uh, I'd say the biggest takeaway here is just pick one style of learning that you like. If you like books, you can just use books. You don't need to use videos, you don't need the courses. If you like videos, you could use the videos and annotate on notes or books, and that's totally fine. Or if you like courses, you like staying in classes and you think that would help you commit, fine. But you don't need to do all three. The second part of uh, preparation is dedicated period material. هذه الفترة اللي قبل الاختبار على طول، آخر شهرين أو ثلاثة قبل الاختبار، خلاص أنت حجزت مواد اختبارك وقاعد تذاكر. فهذه تقريبا يونيفورم أمونج إيفيون هو تيك ستيب 1. و يو بروبلي نيد تو جو أوفر إيتش ريسورس أتليست تويست بيفور ذا إكزام. فيرست إيد هو البايبل القرآن حقهم. يو وولد نفس الشيء، يو وولد إز أ كويستشن باك، إتس نوت أ بوك. يو هاف تو جو ثرو إت أتليست تويست. من رأيي الشخصي هو أهم مصدر ستيب 1 وحتى ستيب 2. و يو ماني از ذات اف يو هاف ون ريسورس تو انفست ان يو ويل ويز يور ريسورس بلس اور ماينس بثوما اي هافنت يوزد ات بيرسونالي لكن ايفري ون ايلس اي نو تو اكزام سويرز باي ات وي بيرن اسينشال ان ذا بيس بيس براكتس تيست هي براكتس تيست من نفس اللي هو ناشونال بورد اوف ميديكال اكزامنرز هم اللي يسوون ستيب اكزامز كل سنتين تقريبا ذي ريتاير اباوت 10% اوف ذا كويستشنز ويسوون براكتس تيست فهذه تكون مدتها نص مده الاختبار الفعلي، يعني مثلا ستيب 1 بيكون اربع ساعات. الاسئله مره قريبه من اسئله الاختبار الفعلي. وفي الاخير they give you a score that kind of predicts your uh, how well you do on the exam. ف definitely look at how you do in practice test and it will tell you يعني within a reasonable range how you'll do on the real thing. My recommendation is doing at least three practice tests at least once once you start dedicated period. once in the middle of the dedicated period and one just before you take the exam عشان خلاص تشوف انه والله you're doing well you're ready to take the exam او انك والله مش راضي بادائك وتبغى تاجل that's a decision for then يعني بس هذا it's a good end point for you في your world self assessment it's also very good زي الام بي ام براكتس تيست so uh, I know a lot of people who used it and really like it and say they برضو يعني دقيق يعني قريب من نتيجتك الفعليه في الاختبار So this is an example of a timeline for step one. First of all, you have your basic science review duration. You can use Becker or Kaplan or Pathoma or Sketchy or Leho. Duration varies depending on where are you in your medical education journey. If you want to finish clinical sciences, you uh, clinical, you probably don't need a lot of time. If you uh, you're later on and you feel like you forgot a lot of the basic sciences, you probably need a little more time to invest in this basic science review. The data case here, the your world first aid plus or minus pathoma with your practice exams is probably 8 to 16 weeks maximum. I'd say 8 to 12 weeks is probably the perfect sweet spot, especially if you have full-time study. If you don't have full-time, then it kind of differs. But say the, in terms of the I'd say two to three months is, uh, is a good time. And then you kind of take your exam. Of course, your practice exams are in the middle of the data case period, and it kind of dictates how well you're doing. So some pitfalls in preparation in step one. I'd say the first is getting stuck in the review period. But the microbiology, you start making the same thing, you would go to another study, you start another study. But then you start making more and more and more. You start videos or whatever. Uh, my recommendation is put like schedule, start the process, and trust the process. خلاص. Uh, once you're done, don't go back to the same subject again. نفس نفس النمط اللي هو the pitfall of using too many resources for the same subject. Just pick one you're comfortable with and go with it. Well, I'm using Sketchy Micro, I like it. خلاص, no need to go to Kaplan, Becker, or let's say that. I'm using Pathoma and I like it in pathology. You don't need to go back to Becker's pathology or Kaplan's pathology or any other pathology. Just use one you're comfortable with. Well, information is not a lot of difference between the two. The third thing is trying to memorize everything. This is very important in my opinion. You don't have anything. Biochemistry, microbiology, pharmacology, you don't have anything at all. You just need to understand the concepts, to go and index some framework in your mind. Once you start doing your world, once you start doing first aid, you'll start picking up on these details. Just trust your process. And the is not doing enough practice questions. The last is questions and answers. It's not testing your knowledge. It's not testing something specific. It's testing how well you do questions. 
But the more question banks you do, the more you practice on your questions, the more you time yourself, the better you will do in the real thing. So actually, step one, going pass and fail. Uh, US Mini announced earlier, uh, last, or late last year, and uh, the program will go to pass and fail instead of being scored. Uh, no earlier than January 1st, 2022. Uh, but what this means for us as international medical graduates, and uh, fail and get them, but like for here, you are competing with American students. The American students are going to be bad, they have four years in the manhaj, they take it after second year. فاللي بيقدمون في 2023 2024 هم اللي بيكونوا باس فيل لكن اي احد قبلها بيكونوا مقدمين بسكورز وماي ريكومنديشن از ان انترناشونال ميديكال جراديوت تيك ذا اكزام سكور ون لان اكثر شيء يفرق بينك وبين الباقي از ا جود سكور ان ستيب ون اف اتس باس فيل ذن اتس كايند اوف ديفيكولت تو فلتر يو اوت فروم اني ون ايلس فاف يو بلان اون ابلاينج فور 2023 24 2023 2024 اي ريكومند تيكينج ذا اكزام بيفور 2022 now we'll talk a little bit about step two CK preparation. So outline is kind of similar. So uh, what is the SMD step two CK exam? How to prepare for the exam? So, and then how does it differ from step one? And how does it differ from the SMLE, especially for the interns? By ensure it's study resources, practice tests, or pitfalls of preparation. So the SMLE step two CK is the second exam from the required three for residency and the required four for being licensed. It's a multiple choice exam. It's nine hours in length. It's longer than step one. It's eight 60 minute blocks and one hour break. And disciplines tested are medicine, surgery, pediatrics, uh, obstetrics and gynecology, and psychiatry. clinical years, we get better exposure and our American colleagues in studying this. As you the breakdown of the exam, most of it is internal medicine, about 50 to 60%. Internal medicine includes neurology, includes ophthalmology, includes other subjects that we don't usually associate with, associate with medicine. What I can say, as you the biggest uh, like range of questions is on medicine. Again, next uh, thing, added facts. What's coming next is my opinion based on my experience and some other colleagues' experiences. So how does it differ from step one? It's longer by an hour. Uh, stems can be longer, and you might have even more data to interpret. If you have step one, you can get more data to step two. You'll get more data, but then you have best labs, you can take labs, or imaging, or an EKG, or some other data to interpret. So you have to be quick with it. Well, work with my if you have a minute or a minute change for each question. Well, exam materials generally better covered than university curriculums. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going uh, we don't usually struggle with this exam. Let's kind of show the difference between step 2 CK and the SMLE. Uh, again, this is opinion based, could be right, could be wrong, like now I'm to die, I know what I'm going to do. Step 2 CK emphasizes more on understanding concepts and interpreting data. Add to my SL and details, the key of the table, and my my head very deeply in specific subjects. It might ask you some very specific questions that are kind of difficult to predict. I think that is a big part of SMLE. Step 2 CK test on a wider variety of subjects and diseases. SMLE is way narrower, like it's not that huge of a difference. Questions of Step 2 CK are often in second and third order. Step 1 can ask you a second order question. Step 2 CK might ask you even a third order question might ask you to know what the disease is, what the first line treatment is, then what the side effects is, oh, what, uh, first, what the diagnosis is, and then what the management is, and what the uh, complication is. So uh, this is something to, you need to get used to, and it's not that difficult if you use the question banks and practice early on. Uh, length is nine hours in length, Benispel CK. Well, SME is about seven hours in length. Oh, study resources. More than step one. Step one, you need your best science review, but then the case period. Um, step two, usually my touch review level. I love the next after doing a clinical years and usually, usually have a decent basis. I have that review extensive level the case period for the exam. Uh, step one asks what are the best resources? Well, I can I'd say the most important one is the world question bank, probably twice. Uh, videos, online med ed. Everyone I know took the exam swears by it. It's a very good uh, resource. 
a few other stuff like uh, subject oriented review books for hand step up to medicine capla medicine back up medicine ناس شيء كسرجري وسايكاتري وبيجاني ما الى ذلك وفي برضو الفيديوز اللي مصاحبه لها وفي سم اكزام اورينتد ريفيو بوكس زي فيرست ايد فيرست ستيب تو سي كي في ستيب اب تو ستيب تو سي كي في ماستر ذا بورد هذه كلها برضو هيلبفول لكن ات سي نوت از امبورتنت از يور نوت از امبورتنت از اونلاين ميثود اي اولسو هيرد سم بيبل توك ريلي ويل اباوت امبوس اي هافنت يوزد ات بيرسونالي او اي دونت نو ماتش اباوت ات لكن لوتس اوف بيبل سوير باي اس براكتس تيست تقريبا زي ستيب 1 اتس ريلي امبورتنت اي سي تيك ات ليست 3 اتس يوزلي ا جود بريدكتور اوف يور بيرفورمانس اون ذا اكزام نفس الشيء بيكون نص مدة الاختبار 4 to 5 hours وتلزم the exam questions very closely because they are retired questions from the question bank or as I said your self assessment is also good probably take at least three نفس الشيء preparation timeline ولكن هنا clinical science reviews and advice and not everyone needs it I'd say the vast majority only need a small time to review their clinical sciences before starting their dedicated studies with dedicated is not as long as uh, Step one, I'd say six to eight weeks is more than enough time, especially if it's full time. Doing your world online my dad, plus and minus a review book or two is more than enough. Some pitfalls of preparation. Uh, as I said, we cover it well in our universities. I tend to feel more confident going into the exam. Well, I can, it's a really difficult exam. I'd say it's at least as difficult or not, even, or even more difficult than step one. So prepare well, prepare well. I know after, especially those who do step one kind of feel uh, too tired to study really well for step two, but it's a really important exam and it's really difficult. You have to prepare well. Uh, a nine hour exam doesn't seem like a big leap from an eight hour exam in step one, but uh, in my opinion, it definitely is. It's uh, an exhausting exam and you need to prepare for this. During your study period, kind of schedule yourself, build that stamina for doing a nine hour exam. Uh, using too many resources for the same subject, that's a shame. Just pick one you're comfortable with and go with it. Matter to what doctor medicine, step up to medicine is good for you. خلاص ما يحتاج تخلي كتب ثانية medicine. The same thing with other subjects. Uh, trying to memorize everything, that's a shame. Uh, how to fuck a shame, ما بتخلص. You'll go into an endless cycle, ما بتخلص. Just trust your process and uh, keep going. في الأخير في the Q bank, you'll pick up more of the small details you need for the exam. Not doing enough practice questions. Again, you how well you do questions, not how, how much you know. But the more you practice on your questions, the more practice exams you do, the probably better you'll perform. So that does it for step two uh, CK. Now we'll talk about step two CS preparation. Again, we'll talk what step two CS is and then how to prepare for the exam. Step two CS is the third exam you need. Unlike step two uh, CK and step one, it's a clinical exam usually has 12 standardized patient encounters and 12 stations. Or, uh, it has three breaks in between each encounter, uh, 10 minutes after the third encounter, 30 minutes after the, the sixth, and 10 minutes after the ninth encounter. Uh, examinees are scored based on three things. So how the one time they will be able to test your medical knowledge, your communication and interpersonal skills, spoken English proficiency, and integrated clinical encounter. How the your clinical skills are getting. If you notice, only one of the three components are graded on your clinical knowledge. Uh, you have to take it in the US. There are only five designated centers in Chicago, Atlanta, Houston, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia. The exam is not scored. It's just pass or fail. But can you have a patient encounter? You enter to a patient. Uh, it's a 15-minute encounter. Usually, usually, you have to take a focused history, not a thorough one. A focused physical examination, same thing, not a thorough one. And then you have to uh, talk to your patient, explain what's going on, and counsel them. You may have some questions, you may need some education. diagnosis and the work of plan and you discuss the findings with the patient which is really important and then counsel appropriately if there's some counseling to be done if uh, there's breaking bad news to be done you kind of have to talk to your patient and counsel them appropriately if you finish early from the 15 minute encounter you could leave to start working on the patient note which is 10 minutes in length 
عندك 10 دقائق تعبي a page note of history, your physical exam, and then your differential diagnosis with supporting data in the history and exam, and then your potential workup. بوريكم الفورم حق ال page note بعد شوي. So هذا الفورم يكون عندك you have to write your patient history هنا with a maximum of 950 characters. Physical examination, 950 characters برضو. Then your diagnostic reasoning, to the differential diagnosis حقك, number one, number two, and number three. Uh, from most likely to least likely differential. You don't need to put three on each station. You can put two sometimes, or even one if you're really confident, but I wouldn't recommend it. What help the findings in the damn differential diagnosis. For the history, or findings for examination. Lastly, you need to add your diagnostic workup. If you want to do some blood tests, you want to do some imaging, you want to do an EKG, you want to do whatever you need to do, you put it in the diagnostic studies. Uh, also included here, اللي هو the pelvic or genital exam or breast exam. ما بتسويهم في station. You'll just mention that you want to do it, and you put it in the diagnostic studies. طبعاً, this patient notes is timed. You only have 10 minutes or some extra time if you leave early from the station, and it's typed. So if your typing is not uh, really quick, you kind of have to practice beforehand. اللي بعد الحين is all again my opinion on the exam instead of the facts. Can you the differences between step 2 CS, so between OSCE for med school or long case med school? OSCE adds is five to ten minutes. It's very structured. Add ten, you have one or two specific tasks that you have to do, like a history or a physical or some counseling or clinical reason. You have to do something to you don't have to do all of them. And you're graded based on what you do inside the room. So the examiner will be in the room, and the simulator will be in the room, and the two of them will be in the room, and the other will be in the room. The step to CS, you'll be graded inside the room and outside the room. And the standardized patient will be graded by the communication, the technique, your English language. But then outside the room, you'll write the notes, and a physician will review your notes and look at your clinical reasoning and how well you're writing your thoughts, and then he sees if it's appropriate or not. And here, in the step to CS, you'll be graded on all the tasks. You'll do history, physical, counseling, and clinical reasoning, which will be all of them. والمدة بيكون 25 minutes instead of 5 to 10. Long case كان الـ difference من الاثنين هذول ان it stays 40 minutes نفس الشيء تاسكس all tasks together بتدخل على patient تاخذ history, exam, counseling, clinical reasoning. A big difference طبعا هنا غالبا يكون a real patient. والجريدنج عادة يكون برا الغرفة ما يكون داخل الغرفة. يعني انت بتدخل على المريض you gather your thoughts تاخذ history حقك والاكزامينيشن وبتكلم المريض وبتاخذ راحتك. بعدين بتطلع ان الاكزامينر will meet you and grade you there. So uh, that's kind of a significant difference from step 2 CS. We're graded in both settings. Study resources in step 2 CS. It's a fairly straightforward exam. Uh, some people do live exam preparation courses. I tend to call America, I tend to Kaplan, USMLE Success Academy, or others. I tend to five days of practice with a mock exam at the end of the course. And then the first aid step 2 CS. I'd say that's the most important book in this book. It covers almost everything you'll see on the exam. It has a lot of very good practice cases if you have a partner to practice with. Or uh, I'd say this is more than enough for the exam. You don't need the live exam course. Uh, well, I can, if you don't have a study partner, you don't feel really confident of what's accurate, you could do the live examination course. Again, a preparation timeline for step 2CS. I would say I'd say go through first aid, but don't go through the simulated cases. Leave them for your practice time. I like can go over. بيعطيك كيف الاختبار واللاي اوت وات ار ثينجز شو دو وش افضل تكنيكس تسويها وات ار ذا هايست يلد كويستشنز تو اسك وما الى ذلك. I'd say this takes about two weeks of skimming through first aid ما بتحفظ معلومات you're just going through it and understanding the exam. But then you have a dedicated practice period either you with a study partner or uh, doing the live course. Uh, now you can kind of practice the cases اللي موجودة في first aid step 2 CS او الكيس اللي يعطونك اياها الكورس اللي تشترك فيه. I'd say two to four weeks full time is more than enough for the exam, uh, especially if your English is decent, so you can type well, you'd definitely be fine. Pitfalls of preparation, again, not spending enough time practicing. It's two to four weeks, not a lot, but if you don't practice, trust me, it will hurt you in the exam. And especially with timing, you have to time yourself to do everything in 15 minutes. This takes some practice. Uh, focusing too much on the clinical component of the exam is important. Uh, you definitely need to prepare for American patients. I'm uh, going Culturally, there some differences. Uh, the way you can apply everywhere. But 
definitely prepared to talking to American patients. Two out of three scoring components are not on your clinical knowledge, not on your clinical technique. It's on your communication and your spoken English proficiency. A third, which I'd say is important, well, I can inshallah, with upcoming generations, I can inshallah, ma and fiha, is being able to type a timely and concise paid note, uh, your patient note. If you're not fast or at least decent at typing, you can't write a patient note in 10 minutes. Practice before going to the exam and make sure you can do it. Uh, I personally know uh, one or two who failed the exam because they didn't have time to type up their patient notes. Um, COVID-19 uh, kind of hit the US really hard and they had an update to their step 2 CS exam. Uh, as of uh, late May, which is about one or two weeks ago, step 2 CS has been suspended for 12 to 18 months. Uh, what that means for those who plan to apply to residency this year who haven't taken CS is unclear as of yet, but they're looking for a solution, especially for ECFMG certification. So uh, this does it for my presentation. I've talked briefly about step one, step two CK, and step two CS. Uh, future pathways and I'm happy to take any questions if you guys have questions. Feel free to reach out uh, via email if you have any questions after the talk or after doing the questions. Thank you very much. When is the best time to take uh, step one and two? All right, so uh, I'd say that varies from person to person. Well, I can, what we need to understand best is that American students will education pathway after home, they do four years of medical education. Uh, first two years, they only do preclinical. They only do uh, two years of preclinical. Then they do the step one in the summer between the second and third year. Step two CK and step two CS at this one after the third year. Third year has whole core clinical rotation. They do internal medicine, surgery, obstetrics and gynecology, or psychiatry. But they're kind of the most ready after the third year. So we get more the residency during the fourth year. But I'd say if you can afford to do it the same way they do, and like, so we have bad step one, bad three clinical years, and yeah, then the summer between, I'd say that's perfect. You're probably the most ready by then. Well, I can, does that mean you have to do it at that time? Not really. Uh, could it be not a great time for you? You feel tired, then when overwhelmed, that's totally fine. I have not so well later on clinical years, I have not so well internship, perhaps not so well bad, I even know people who did it during fellowship. It's not a big deal if you do it later on. Well, like I'd say the perfect time for step one is after pre clinical years. Step two CK, I'd say for a Saudi medical students, I have to say in the internship or in the end of the the most clinical exposure we can get, so we can adjust the clinical sciences. That kind of blurries the picture. Shway. What I can say that late on and during your internship or very early on, the SME is a good time. CS, um, whenever you can afford it. I have a fear knowledge that you have to do it in the year of internship. Whenever you can afford to go to the States and take the exam, just go ahead and take it. Thank you. For the next question, if you can tell us more about your opinion, نأخذ الأسامي قبل الباس أو فيل أفضل. في الأخير أنت إذا بتقدم في عام 2021 أو 2022 أنت بتقدم مع American students. وفي الأخير منافستك درجات بتجيهم درجات students ودرجاتك. الديفولت إنه يأخذ American students عليك. والديفولت إنه يأخذ الناس من اللي من جامعات معروفة برا أمريكا مثلاً من جامعات في أوروبا جامعات في مثلاً American University of Beirut أجا خان universities الجامعات المعروفة عادة بفضل خريجينها عليك أنت لأنه ما يعرفك أنت أنت والله واحد جاي من السعودية من جامعة معرفها I've never heard of you ولكن what makes us stand out is having good numbers but if you can take step one before it's pass fail you get a really good score this will make you stand out مع الأمريكانز ومع الانترناشنالز من أماكن ثانية but this kind of makes your application stand out يخلي program directors يقروا الابليكيشن حقك and might consider interviewing you if that makes sense والسؤال الثاني إذا تقترح ال resources تبع step two CK ال USM ال USM اللي برضه. USM اللي أنا I took CK قبل USM اللي فما view شوية biased. 
I'd say doing CK helps build a good basis for SMD, but I think the SMD is a different beast. I don't know if you have any idea about SMD. Practice Tajmiat. Tajmiat is a very important SMD. If you are decent at clinical sciences, you don't need Tajmiat. Tajmiat is a good idea. I know that the first aid step to CK will help them a little bit. I know that the first step up will help them a little bit. ولكن الفاست ماجورتي من اللي سويت معهم تجهيز الاسمدي سواء اخذوا الامريكي والكندي او ما اخذوا يقولوا ان التجميعات از وير ذا ماني از. والسؤال الثاني اذا انت من وجهه نظرك تقترح ان اذا بدوا من فيرست ايد ويو وورلد بدون ما يشوفون الريفيو بوكس هل والكورسز از ذات اوكي ولا؟ اي نو سم ون هو ديد ات لكن ما شاء الله اكسبشن ستودنت وي ديد ريلي ويل اون اكزام. I'd say use a practice exam to tell you. يعني مثلاً سويت first aid year old وصلت نص تذاكرتك. سوى practice exam. See how well you do. If you're satisfied with your score, you're satisfied with your score. Who might tell you when to ارجع وراجع basic science? How long did it take you to prepare for the stuff? For me, it was kind of weird. أنا أخذت course for step one after my third year or second year. إذا ما تحسمون التحضيري. However, I was not completely finished with basic science. Uh, I kind of took some time off. But then I went back to study, but during my university years, I can much full time. It took me about three months or four months. I took the exam right afterwards. Yeah, so I'd say four months that the course, or four months part time that the course. Mm -hmm. سؤال الثاني Do you recommend doing questions before the dedicated period؟ أعتقد أن قصدهم just in general قبل ما حتى تبدأ تخطط الاختبار. Yeah, if you can afford to, fine. نصيحتي لا تخرب على نفسك يول. If you can use another مثلاً question bank مثلاً USMLRX أو I forget the name Kaplan's question bank during your basic science review period. I'd say that's a good idea. Of course, this means more money and more time. Well, I can, I'd say it might help, especially getting to know how questions are phrased. Then, the way they answer them, they have patterns. My, you know, if you can recognize them, I'd say that's not a bad idea. Uh, and also, a question: If can we take step two CK before step one? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, I know people who did, especially the people who took them a little later on. Well, I can add an advantage of taking step one than step two CK is that step one gives you a really good basis for step two CK. تحنو مو نفس السبجكت ولكن building on your step one knowledge will help you a lot in preparing for step two CK. كامتياز كيف ممكن أبدأ خطتي بشكل مناسب؟ في الامتياز for all three exams or only one. Let's say all three exams لأن ما ما يطلع لي. آه صحيح. I'd say في الأخير SMLE هو الأولوية. في الأخير you wanna match here في البداية. Make sure that you're going to especially that you want هنا. And then you kind of fit in your your SMLE during the internship. فمثلاً أنت بد تبدأ ذاكر مثلاً من بعد سنة سادسة أو خامسة أو تبغى آخر سنة في كلية الطب وتجهز مثلاً لل step one and you kind of take the exam early on. You take that in SMLE that's fine. تبغى مثلاً ذاكر step two CK في البداية. And you take it and help build on that. In this case, SMLE. That also sounds like a decent idea. But in terms of step one, bad SMLE. There's no one one way to skin a cat. So, شوي صعب إني أعطيك اقتراح واضح. ولكن my opinion, SMLE سنة الامتياز هو أهم شيء. After that, whatever fits fits. If you need more time to take your SMLE steps, take some more time. وفي أكثر من شخص سأل نفس السؤال إذا هل برأيك تعتقد أن يمديهم يختبرون يو اس ام لي خلال الدراسة؟ يس يو كان يا أنا سويتها خلال الدراسة أي نو أتليست 15 تو 20 بيبل ديد إت سعوديين في جامعات مختلفة يو كان دو إت ولكن إت تيكس لوت أوف تايم أند ديديكيشن وميبي سم ساكرفايس إن يور يونيفرستي كريكولم ولكن إتس ديفنتلي دوبل Since step one is gonna be pass or fail, as an international student, how can I compete with U.S. students? So this is a tough one, and I'd say the pass or fail does not serve international students really well. 
what I can I'd say the best thing to do is uh, kind of get people in the states to know you. Do as many electives as you can in the states. Uh, get active in the research. Uh, if you can collaborate with people in the states, that would be even better. Uh, do well on your Step 2 CK exam. Step 2 CK will not change to pass fail. In the end, this is also a number for you. But if you can do really well on Step 2 CK, that will also help you. Mm-hmm. Oh, also, a question that do you think in the Step 2 will be harder in the future after pass or fail? Uh, it's kind of difficult to predict, I don't know. Um, is there a specific duration for the USMLE certificate to expire, if you know? Not that I know of. Like, not if some states, some states require you taking from step one to step three within seven years, which is plenty of time. Yeah. But, uh, for the most part, I think it's the expiration. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's uh, your biggest piece of advice for fifth year and fourth year medical students? Preparing their exams, yeah. Preparing. Okay, so uh, set a schedule early on. حتى لو لست سبع سنة قدام ما هي مشكلة. Just uh, set a good schedule and stick to it. أدري إنه صعب. وأدري إنه بيجيك سبعات كلية وبيجيك research وبيجيك حملات وبيجيك ما أدري وش وأشياء كثير بتشتتك. ولكن set yourself a schedule and trust your process. و, uh, it's all about dedication. الاختبار is very predictable. وما هو سهل ولكن it's very predictable and doing well is fairly straightforward. ف just set a good schedule and stick to it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a question saying, I'm a first year medical student. Should I take one step one before 2022, even though it, would be, it wouldn't be enough time to study slash practice that well? No, no, no. Can I mean, step one, the NASA will be good more 2023, 2024. بعدها بيصير كل احد يقدم باس اوف فيلد ف في الاخير يو ليفل جراوند فيلد ف اي وودنت سي تيك ستيب 1 رايت ناو ولا السنه الجايه في فيرست يير دونت وري اباوت ات لسه عندك طريق يعني طريق طويل دونت وري اباوت وات بنفيتس كان اي جيت فروم ستيب 1 اف اي تشوز تو ستي ان كي اس اي I don't know. I don't think there's much benefit to it. Uh, I've just been through the interview process for Saudi. If you're taking the steps, I wouldn't showcase it. Uh, taking the steps is because you want to practice in the States. If you don't want to practice in the States, I wouldn't recommend taking the steps. Mm-hmm. Um, last question. I'm going to in studying for step one and uh, USMLE and the SMLE at the same time is reasonable? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, studying step one and SMLE at the same time, is that reasonable? Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. It's uh, two completely different exams with two completely different subjects. Uh, focus on one, then the other. Don't do both at the same time. Uh, that's it. That's basically all the questions. Uh, mm-hmm. شكرا دكتور um, المحاضرة مرة مهمة ومرة مفيدة وجاوبت على كل أسئلتنا فشكرا على أعطائنا من وقتك الثمين الله يجعلها يا رب ميزان حسناتك الله يجزاكم خير والله يعطيك العافية على الترتيب والتنسيق it was very easy to do this وإن شاء الله نكون فدناكم كنا على قدر تطلعت شكرا شكرا, شكرا.